I'm Mark with Macroscopic Solutions. Uh, I'm back with the What's in the Box video for the Macropod Macro Box system. So, as you can see, there's quite a few components on the table in front of me. Uh, what we'll try to do is kind of break this down uh, in an order that, that sort of makes sense. Again, to sort of recap what this system is designed to do, it's designed to image large boxes like the one that you see in front of me. Uh, these boxes can actually be as large as two meters in size uh, if needed on a system that's designed here. I have two one meter long rails. Uh, so in this case, with a two meter long rail system on both axes, uh, you're looking at a half a meter by a half a meter box. Actually, a half a meter by a one meter box, excuse me. Um, and I'll show you how and, and why uh, the size limitations kind of correspond to those rail lengths in time. But for now, uh, let's go ahead and proceed uh, with all of the system here and all of the components piece by piece. Uh, let's begin actually with the camera and the scanning and the imaging equipment. Uh, here we're using a fully mirrorless camera body. This is the R6 Mark II uh, by Canon. We also provide the 5D Mark II, which is a little bit better in terms of resolution, but because we're actually doing some XY scanning, uh, it's actually more practical to go with the smaller uh, camera sensor on the R6. Uh, so that's why we chose this camera. The MPE 65mm, this is your 1 to 5x lens. It functions very much like a stereo microscope. So this is actually looking at a 1 to 1 ratio to a 5 to 1 ratio, which means that you have the ability uh, to telescopically magnify your subject up to five times. Now, these lenses are actually no longer available by Canon, however, Macroscopic Solutions continues to source and offer these uh, as a bonus to all of our clients. So, something to keep in mind if you're looking for uh, an imaging system, uh, we do continue to provide these lenses uh, and will for the foreseeable future. So, in its place, just because uh, those lenses are discontinued in case they become a little bit more difficult to get a hold of down the road, Macroscopic Solutions has actually partnered with Mittatoyo. So to supplement the 1 to 5x capability uh, from the discontinued lens, we now offer microscope objectives. Now these come at a variety of different magnifications. Uh, we are a partner of Mittatoyo, so we have been able to get the cost down a little bit uh, on these objectives. But in this kit, in this particular system, we are providing the 2x and the 5x range. Now these objectives are meant to be married to an adapter plate, which I have here. This adapter plate will thread directly into another lens. This is your 70 to 200 millimeter lens uh, by Canon. This adapter plate threads right into the front here, and then you'll thread your objective into the front of this lens. That will convert it into a 2x and a 5x microscope. So, just going to pop this back down, just so everybody knows. This lens, whenever it is used with a microscope objective, it's currently at the 70 millimeter uh, range. What we're going to do is actually turn the lock off and adjust it to 200 millimeters. Those objectives require uh, 200 millimeter of focal length between the camera sensor and the optic. So you want to leave this at 200. You want to turn off all of the motor stabilizers. Uh, you want to make sure that the lens is in MF mode, which means that you are controlling the focus, not the lens. Uh, and you want to have the, um, the infinity range set to full. Okay, so I'm just going to pop this back down to 70 and turn the lock back on because we're not going to use this lens currently. Now, in case you're not looking to magnify your subject, let's say that of this insect box, we're not trying to look at the actual scales on the butterfly wings. Uh, we just want a nice contextual practical image, but one that's still very high quality and high in resolution. Uh, in that case, what you're going to turn to is your 100 millimeter lens. So your 100 millimeter is a one-to-one -one ratio, and then we'll photograph things that are larger, which means that depending on how close or how far this lens is from the box, I can either photograph this entire box with one image, or I can get nice and close and photograph this box and generate a panoramic by generating a number of images. So either down the, the x-axis or along uh, the y-axis. So, um, this is actually going to probably be the most valuable lens for a system like this. Um, most researchers are not going to be after really ultra high quality. They don't want an image that's so large that it's hard to even store on a computer or view or manipulate. Uh, you want a uh, an image that's very high quality uh, and very practical to view and use in science. 
Therefore, the 100 millimeter lens really is your go-to lens uh, for this system. I will be demonstrating this system uh, with both of these lenses so you get a good idea of how, how everything is going to work. And even if I don't, what I will do is review the instructions. Uh, same story, whenever you use um, a focus stacking or a panoramic style imaging system, autofocus must be turned off. So 100 millimeter, this must be placed into MF. Uh, any image stabilizers you want to turn off, those image stabilizers are fantastic if you're shooting handheld. Uh, but in our case, we have very sophisticated and very robust tripod systems uh, that stabilize the camera for you. So what's happening is the lens trigger, that motor is actually going to press against the lens and it's actually going to create a vibration that's unwanted. So you want to make sure that the image stabilizers are turned off and again in the infinity range uh, you want to leave set to full. Okay, so that's camera and lens. Um, in addition, we do have an adapter. Uh, this adapter is basically the EOS R to the older EF style Canon lenses. Um, this is what you'll need in order to mount the MP65 onto the, old, onto the new mirrorless bodies. In addition, you're also going to need a flash. Macroscopic Solutions has completely converted over to the wireless Godox X-Pro-C and Godox MF12 flash heads. They're very nice because they are wireless, they function on a channel. The transmitter requires two AA rechargeable batteries. They can be replaced in time and the flash heads of the Godox are actually rechargeable themselves and you can operate this by leaving them plugged in if you are concerned about them losing a particular charge. So they're very nice. Uh, what Macroscopic Solutions does is we provide you with four of these. That way you're using two while the other two are remaining on the charge and that way it limits or, or mitigates downtime completely. Okay, we also have our standard assortment of diffusers. I'll start with this diffuser. This diffuser is specifically if the user of this system wants to kind of go back to a Macropod Pro-like configuration. This is actually going to allow you to get terrific lighting, lighting that is very similar to what we have with our Macropod Pro 3D systems, uh, and it's used in combination with the rotary stage and universal stage. So you can mount specimens on here as small as a millimeter in size, or you can take this universal stage off, put a larger table on here, uh, one that's even a foot wide, and then you can actually 3D model very large materials, so materials the size of the 70 to 200 millimeter lens, for example. So these diffusers here, basically what they're designed to do is clip together. It only breaks in half so that you can access your sample when you're ready to shoot. Put this back on top. It blocks the direct light and bounces light around the inside through these little windows here to give you really balanced and diffused lighting, something that's very unique with macroscopic solutions systems. In addition, we have our Godox MF12 uh, turtle dove diffusers. These, what I'll do is I'll mount these now because we're going to use them. They actually just snap directly on the front of the Godox, uh, uh, Godox flash heads. And what they are designed to do is reflect the light off of a basal front and reproject them onto this inner shell, and then that will reproject light onto your sample. So you're getting a very, very diffused light with these. It's not perfect, it's a little less than ideal, but for a more macro configuration like we have here, it's actually perfect. It's going to work really well. So we're going to leave those turtle dove diffusers on those flashes. The <coughs> diffuser here is designed to work with the Mitsutoyo objectives. So this is basically if you're lighting your box from behind, what you want to do is shine the light up towards the objective and then reproject the light back onto your sample. It might be a little bit more difficult to do with a configuration like this, but you can still add this diffuser. It's not going to uh, hurt anything, it's actually only going to assist with lighting. So this diffuser is for both the 2 and the 5x objective, so I'll leave the diffuser there. There's a twist lock diffuser. This is for your RF 100 millimeter. Same exact function, only it's designed for that 100 millimeter lens. And then you have an MPE 65 O-ring type seal, which will mount directly onto your MPE 65. So just so everybody knows, that's what those diffusers are for, uh, and that's the complete set for this system. Also included is a set of four AA uh, Unloop Pro batteries. Uh, these are terrific. Uh, they have a really high milliamp rating, so they are going to last quite a while, except <clears throat> just know that rechargeable batteries do have a life cycle. Uh, you recharge these, 
and discharge them over 100 times, they are going to start to lose their charge. These do last longer than your typical rechargeable battery, but if forever you need to get to a point where you need to replace these, um, you'll want to look for the same brand. Uh, again, uh, these batteries specifically are for the flash transmitter. It will take two at a time while the other two remain on charge. Okay, moving on. There is also a packet. This is all the warranty and registration information through Canon and Cognosys and Macroscopic Solutions. You want to read this, uh, register your serial numbers, and that will activate your annual or, two or biannual warranties. Move this to the side for now. Over here, what we have is a power uh, assortment of power cables uh, and batteries. Now, everything here is designed to function off of a battery in order to reduce cable clutter. But sometimes the cable clutter is needed because you want to operate the system all day long, day after day after day. So, um, let's just start with what the AC cables are. This AC cable comes in a box, or uh, sorry, a little bag titled Go9. Now this is actually the AC power adapter for the camera unit itself. So this way you don't actually need to install the battery in here. What you'll do is you'll open the battery door. Inside here is a little flap. You need to open that flap. It's very important that you do that. Now what you'll do is you'll install. Well, first thing you need to actually tuck the cable is a little L groove that moves the cable out to the side. You'll need to install the AC coupling. So this battery is going to go in here and then the cable is going to fit outside that door. Now the reason why that's important is because you cannot power this camera on if this door is not closed. So that cable actually needs to come through that door there. Uh, so I'm just going to move this a little bit closer to the camera so that you can see. But basically I've installed the AC coupling and inside here is a little door. You can kind of see the groove there. I've moved the cable through that groove and now I can close the door. That's how that's going to work. And remember, uh, the AC adapter for that cable is here in the Go9 bag. This is your AC power cable that's going to power your StackShot controller. So the controller is basically the central mechanism that's going to allow you to control all three axes. Uh, it also will synchronize your camera shutter uh, and allow you to capture uh, the boxes. So at the moment, and the way we're going to operate this is actually with a battery pack, which is actually found mounted directly under the remote carriage. If you don't want to use that battery pack or if it dies on you, you'll want to use this, uh, this AC coupler. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to move that to the side because I don't believe we are going to be using that today. So as I mentioned, down here under the remote is a battery pack. Now when you leave for the end of the day and you're done using the system, in here you'll find pink bubble paper. This is a, an, an adapter and then obviously your power plug for your AC cable. <clears throat> this is what's going to allow you to recharge that battery power pack that drives the controller. So this is going to be very valuable if you are using this untethered. So again, put that to the side and just know that that is what that does. You're also given a uh, shutter cable. So this is what's going to allow the controller to synchronize the camera shutter with the movements of the rail systems developed by Cognosys. So, uh, this is going to mount and plug into one side of your camera, and the other one is going to plug into your controller, and I'll show you how in a little while. Okay, already installed is a very short four pin connect, uh, cable connector. This is uh, on the controller is an X, a Y, and Z axes. Now, they're a little bit uh, different than your standard axes in terms of the way that we're going to use them. I'll explain that in a little bit. But uh, this rail is very close to the controller, so you don't actually need a very long four-pin cable. So you can get away with a nice six-inch one. So that one's already going to be pre-installed on your system as it arrives. The two longer cables are going to connect the x-axis and the z-axis. Now, the x-axis is going to be your focus stacking. So that's this rail here. For this system, you have an extended rail, so you have a little bit more flexibility. Uh, it's actually 200 millimeters instead of 100. Uh, so you're going to connect this four pin adapter to one end of the four pin cable, and then connect this to your X axis. The other one, which is identical, same exact cable, is gonna to mount to your Z axis. Your Z axis is going to be uh, the actual translational carriage that holds your box. That's over here. 
So down here again, you have another four pin cable connector. Connect that up to your Z-axis on the controller. Okay, now let's talk about the sliders themselves. So each slider is a meter long. So this, <coughs> this slider that is going to be considered our Y-axis, which typically as our brains would think is gonna be your X-axis, is going to mount uh, your box in an orient, in, in, and uh, sorry, not mount your box, but it, it's gonna basically bolt everything together. So because your camera is actually oriented on this carriage, you can span the full meter length as you capture images. You can have a box that's actually this wide and capture the full length from left to right of the box uh, with your meter long system. Now, this slider here is a meter long. However, the box, uh, the box's short axis is going to be moving along the translational part of that uh, slider which means that if it is a meter long, if you're starting at the top and you're photographing the bottom of the box like this, by the time it moves to the bottom, uh, you're basically only capturing about half uh, of what you need. So if that's a meter long travel, you're only able to capture about a half of a meter uh, dimension. So that's something to keep in mind uh, when we put this together, and you'll see that in practice very soon. Okay, so on the Y-axis slider, there are a number of stabilizers. These are these little brackets that are right here. Uh, if you need to add additional stabilizers, just contact me. They're set up to uh, hold a few more brackets uh, in order to um, really keep the system grounded. On the ends here, there are rubber feet. These rubber feet can be threaded or unthreaded in order to make sure that the system uh, is nice and flat on the table. So you can see here there's no wobble or anything like that because they're, they've been fully extended. Again, we have our three-axis controller that's mounted right here on the arm. And you have an adapter bracket, which is going to mount uh, the arm which holds your camera. Okay, y-axis, and now we're going to get to the z-axis. So the z-axis is essentially a carriage. It's going to be oriented vertically. Your box is going to be situated on this platform. There are screws on the side here. Let's say you'll have a very large box, and you want some more stability. You can unthread those screws, slide up this carriage, and give yourself more room. Also, let's say that you're mounting your box on this platform here. Um, what you can do, what I will provide are these little bungees. So the bungee is actually going to bite the inside of the box, wrap it down and around, grab the other side of the box, and that's going to stabilize the box in case you're uneasy with just sort of setting the box on here. There shouldn't be any issues if you just set the box on here, but if you want that extra stability, it will be there. Okay, so let me explain <coughs> the Spider mechanism. This is actually a tool holder. Uh, typically, when we orient these systems, they're level. They're on the ground like this, which, in which case they can actually move a uh, pretty substantial load. But when you orient the system vertically or at an angle, which we're going to do when this system is being used, uh, everything starts to get a little bit heavier on the stepper motor that's in here. So to counteract and take some of the load off, we have this tool mechanism. Now, for the insect box, it's actually very likely we might not even use this. Uh, but for the soil boxes, which might be 5 kgs at a time, you can actually reduce the weight of those soil boxes by connecting the tool holder uh, right here to this cable. So this is basically just a climbing clamp. You can disconnect this. It will recoil back up if it's not in use. If you put a box on here that's quite heavy, what you'll do is uh, you'll just basically disconnect uh, or reconnect this tool holder as needed. This particular tool holder uh, is a four to six pound load off. So right now it's at four pounds. You pull the center mechanism outward and then it will unwind. That allows it to basically uh, put less force on uh, the box. If you need more force or more tension, so let's say you have a very heavy box, what you do is you'll spin this, spin this mechanism clockwise. Uh, and once you do that, I'm oh, sorry, counterclockwise, uh, that is going to give you a little bit more load capability with the system. Okay, so also under here, we have two mounts. Right here is a mount, and on the underside there, so down here, this is another mount. Uh, that's what's going to allow you to sort of orient the system vertically. One is going to clamp right here onto the uh, Y rail. Let's set this down for a second. And the other is going to link up to your tripod, which is going to be situated a little bit further away. 
what that's going to allow us to do um, is stabilize the center point. The tripod itself opens at the base. You can basically pop these blue locks out if you want more stability, and you can pop them back in at different angles. So I'm going to leave this actually open because we're going to be assembling all this pretty shortly. But that's what that's for. And uh, then you have an extendable arm. So this arm is going to mount onto your Y-axis rail. When this gets mounted on here, your stack shot uh, is, going to, is going to mount on top of that as well. And you have a pivot point so you can then uh, move this camera uh, and the stack shot further or closer to the, uh, the sample or the box. Okay, so that's most of everything covered. These here, these are just clampable flash arms. These are going to mount directly to the Godox flash heads, and then you can basically place these wherever makes the most sense uh, in order to really have really flexible lighting. So that's what these are for. Uh, there's also a little base here. This is just a, a replica of the rotary stage for the universal stage. So if this isn't in use, you can actually just pop it down here, use it under a stereo microscope, or use it as another base, or just position your sample on it. Also, we'll provide you with a full uh, Allen key, metric and imperial. Uh, there might be some screws on here that you need to retension. Make sure that if you are um, tightening any of these screws, you do not over-tighten them. Uh, just tighten everything to the same sort of a level as if, or same sort of power as if you're like shaking a, a, an infant's hand or something like that. Uh, don't over tighten them, you don't want to ruin the threads. Um, but that's what those Allen keys are for. You can readjust this system however you need. Also, let's say that you do a lot of 3D modeling. It's sometimes good to take this base in with you to the hardware store, take a look at the bolt section or different platforms, and you can just buy a few different accessories that are going to suit and mount to the top of this that allow you to sort of accommodate different specimens. Uh, I think the only remaining thing I have not covered yet is just obviously the SD card. The SD card is going to be mounted directly into the camera. However, when we capture images, the images are going to be directly stored on a computer, so it isn't going to matter all that much. Uh, but you should still have this installed in your camera as a backup. Um, the reason why I have two tool holders over here, one is your four to six pound, but just want to also emphasize there's a two to four pound tool holder available as well. So if you just want, again, something to take a little bit of the pressure off the stage, uh, you, these come in lighter weights <clears throat> too. Uh, so I did just want to show that. Um, the other important thing, I think the last thing, is that this stage here that is mounted on the Z-axis, uh, I'm hoping to ship this system with this pre-installed uh, but there's a good chance that um, this is going to have to come off. So there are three Allens here. You might have to actually unthread all three of those, take this plate off, and reinstall it to assemble. So again, there's going to be three bolts. I'll leave the bolt. If I do have to do that, these bolts will actually remain in the mount that's underneath here. You'll just unthread them, take the bolts out, put the stage down, and then put those three bolts back on top and thread them down. Uh, so that's all there is to that. Um, Okay, so that's sort of an overview of everything that's going to be included in the Macrobox kit. Uh, stay tuned. Uh, now what we're going to do is actually assemble the system for you uh, and then begin to actually use it. All right, thanks for listening. I'm Mark with Macroscopic Solutions. Have a good day.